Winter is inching ever closer as we head into mid-September, and El Nino is still in full swing. The waters in both oceans continue to warm and show no signs of stopping soon. This, alongside many other things will greatly impact our winter weather, so let's get right into it. Firstly, here is a map of the average snowfall totals during an El Nino winter between the years 1950 and 2009. There is a fairly high correlation between an El Nino and above average snowfall across the southern United States, and below average snowfall across the north. Specifically, the mountains of the west and the mid-Atlantic see high snowfall totals, while the northwest, Great Lakes, and lake effect regions see much less. This should be kept in mind as we head further into the graphics. We'll next look at how the models think this winter season may play out, as there's a lot to unpack. First is the CFS model, and the one I think is the least likely this winter. This model shows that a large ridge builds across the center of the country, bringing much above average temps to the entire country, which simply isn't feasible over a three-month period. Precipitation-wise, it's mostly in line with the other models, showing wet conditions across the southwest, south, and east, while dry conditions prevail in the Midwest and Great Lakes. Next is the Canadian model. This paints a much more believable picture for temps this winter, with warmth across the northwest and northeast, and cool across the southeast. This model gives the east coast above average precip, while keeping the Great Lakes dry, which is typical for an El Nino winter. The third model is the NMME model, which, much like the Canadian model, keeps the northwest and northeast warm, with this time average temps across the southeast. Also similarly to the other models, the NMME keeps the east and southwest wet, while the Great Lakes and this time the northwest stay dry. The last model I'll look at is the ECMWF, or European model. Pertaining to the US, there are two main areas of interest that this model predicts. Firstly is a below-average heights area across the south and east, which would lead to cool and stormy weather. The second is a large below-average heights area in the northern Pacific Ocean. This is what meteorologists call the PDO region, and the European model indicates that a positive phase may develop, which also tends to lead to a positive PNA and negative NAO. These phases would all point toward a cooler than average south and east this coming winter. Looking at this model's temp and precip outlook, once again, cooler than average temps show up in the southeast, while warmth holds in the north and west, while above average precip occurs in the south and east, but dry conditions prevail in the west. Before getting into my personal forecasts, one last thing to note is Arctic oscillation and the polar vortex. The polar vortex is what keeps cold air locked in the north. A strong, stable vortex leads to contained cold air, while a weak, variable vortex causes cold air to pour southward. Looking again at the European model, this is a graph on how the polar vortex may look this winter. The lower the average line is over the winter months, the greater the chance that cold air pours into the US. Pay attention mostly to the thick blue, thick orange, and thick black lines, and you can see that the blue line, or the average expected strength of the polar vortex, drops off significantly from the average during the heart of winter. This is another consideration to make, as the polar vortex may be very active over this winter, leading to many cold snaps. Finally, here are my predictions for this upcoming winter season. Firstly is the temperature outlook and I believe that much of the south will be considerably cooler than average this year. This area is further west than many of the models predict, as I believe a major Arctic outbreak is possible across the south and may linger there for a long time. In the north, widely warm temps are expected due to a large high pressure expected over Canada. Next is precip, and I expect the south and east to see above average precip, while the Great Lakes and northwest stay dry. This is due to the polar jet stream staying further north, and the subtropical jet stream being very active. Third, and most exciting, is the snowfall anomaly map. An above-average region stretches from the Sierra Nevada mountains, into the southern plains and southeast, and finally across the Appalachians and into extreme southern New England. 
With cool temps and an active subtropical jet stream, the potential for big storms is heightened across the southern U.S., especially so in the Red River Basin. Unfortunately for northern snow lovers, below average snowfall seems to prevail in much of the northwest and Great Lakes, with much below average snowfall possible in the lake effect snow regions. Lastly, here is my updated prediction map for the 2023 to 2024 winter season. Starting in the orange northwest, mild and mostly dry conditions are likely, though some storms are expected. The small flip-flop region in Oregon and California will likely end up near average this winter, though extreme warmth and extreme wet periods are both possible. Much of the southwest in the green region will see wet periods during the winter, with some cold and some warm weather. The central and southern Rockies will likely see typical mountain snow this year, with the north seeing less and the far south seeing more. Big snows are possible in the mountains of Arizona and New Mexico. Moving to the northern plains, a warmer, slightly drier winter is likely in store, with less frequent cold shots than normal, though a significant Arctic outbreak is possible later in the season. In the light red, a fairly average winter is expected, with some warm bouts. The Great Lakes region also looks to be warmer and drier than average, with less lake effect snow than normal. The large purple region is where a mixed bag of precip and temps should be expected, with snow, sleet, rain, and some dry stretches likely. The southern plains look to stay cooler than average with frequent storms. Some wintry precip cannot be ruled out if cold air is readily available. The southeast looks to stay very wet and cool, with an active subtropical jet bringing frequent storms through the area. Southern Florida may get less rain depending on the storm tracks. The red area is where I believe the worst of winter may be. With an active storm track and semi-frequent cold air outbreaks, some large storms may be possible, potentially on the level of the 2010 or 2016 blizzards. This area has seen low snowfall the past few winters, so it's overdue for a big one. Across the Ohio Valley and interior northeast, less snow is likely due to warmer temps and an infrequent storm track. Lastly, some big nor'easters are possible if not likely along the northeast coast this winter. If the storm track sets up properly, some monumental snow totals cannot be ruled out. Thanks for watching. Do keep in mind that we are still many months out from winter, and that this forecast is not going to be 100% accurate. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future uploads. If you have any feedback, please leave a comment, and have a wonderful day.